G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, back at it again with another episode of r slash Entitled People. Now if you love this content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and enjoy the bloody good content. Posted by user to Talgabel, titled, Half-Sister Claimed She Had No Other Dress to Wear But Her Own Wedding Dress. I've been stewing on this story for a few years now, and decided it was time to finally voice it out. This happened back in the beginning of 2017. The cast are John, my brother, Jane, my sister-in-law, Susan, my half-sister, and me, Tetalgabel. So back in 2016, my brother announced that he and his girlfriend of many years were engaged and were planning on having a wedding the following year. They gave nine months' notice, at least, to people who would be invited, and also told the colour theme for the wedding would be purple. In that time between the announcement and the wedding dates, I was easily able to order a dress from an online retailer in London, have it sent to me, and still had time to replace it if I needed. I did not. 2017 comes, and the wedding weekend has arrived. I live in a different state to my brother, as my mum and I moved from our hometown back in 2013, so we both had to travel across the ocean back to the mainland to attend the wedding. The wedding was absolutely gorgeous. Sunny day, on the beach. I couldn't help but cry because my work of a brother was actually marrying the mother of his children and love of his life. He had never seemed happier. John and Jane had three kids together already, and the older two were flower girls, which was sweet. Now, John is technically only my half-brother. We share a mom, but not a dad. Yet growing up, it was my dad who raised John and I, so to him, my dad was his dad. My dad, prior to marrying my mum, had a first wife and a couple kids with that wife, including Susan. John and I have always had some issues with Susan. She was only my half-sister, not John's, but he still included her in the wedding and such as a family member and guest. I hadn't noticed at the time, as I was too caught up in the whirlwind of my brother's wedding ceremony, but Susan wasn't wearing purple. No. No. She was wearing white. To be specific, she was wearing her white wedding dress. To someone else's wedding. John and Jane were pissed, especially Jane. Cue reception. Some people have changed clothes. It was my first ever wedding, so I didn't think that far ahead and still wore my soft lilac dress without a problem while everyone ate and shared some drinks, interacted with bride and groom, what I assumed to be normal wedding things. But Susan... Oh, Susan, Susan, Susan. She was feeling extremely sad and lonely because no one was paying attention to her. The 30-plus-year-old woman who wore her wedding dress to someone else's wedding. I wonder why no one wanted to interact with her. Susan began crying, maybe halfway through reception. Openly, loudly, and in a way that clearly begged for someone to come notice her. I'm a nice person, so I tried to be the good half-sister I should be, and bit the bullet to go sit with her for a while and ask her what's wrong. She says, no one's paying attention to me. Me, while staring at her confused a little, say, what do you mean? Everyone's talking with John and Jane, but no one's talking to me. And and when I try and speak with John and Jane, they don't talk to me. I sighed internally and couldn't help but wonder how she didn't connect the dots. I say to her, Susan, it's their wedding. Of course everyone is going to be talking to them and they're going to be busy. I don't care. I'm John's sister, so he should talk with me more. Actually, lady, you're not his sister. I am. But okay, whatever. I was able to slip away and spend time with some other family who weren't acting as if this day was all about them. After the ceremony, Jane admitted to me that she was livid about how Susan wore the wedding dress. She had plenty time to plan for the wedding and get appropriate attire, but when finally confronted, Susan said she had no other dress that she could wear. This is perhaps a boring tale to most, 
But even three, nearly four years later, I'm still pissed at my half-sister for doing that. My mum, John, and Jane are also pissed about it still. I've since cut contact with Susan. Her and I never had a good bond anyway, and as far as I could see it, we just shared a dad. But I almost never had to deal with my dad's previous family. As far as I know, John and Jane have limited contact with her, but that can't be helped as they live in the same city as her now, while I happily live in a place where an ocean is between me and her. Posted by user Blue-Eyed Mess, titled, Return Your Daughter's Christmas Present and Give Me the Money Because We're Family. Hey Reddit, prepare to lose some brain cells. It was about three years ago, my partner and I wanted to get our daughter a really nice gift for Christmas, so we saved up to get her a DS Lite and a couple games. I was on the phone with my sister a little after New Year's, and she says, Hey! Can you lend me some money? I don't have any food and I don't get paid for a whole week. And I reply, I can probably lend you a tenner. Just pay me back when you get paid. Oh, okay. Any chance you could do a bit more? I literally have nothing. That's all I can give you, sis. Sorry. At that moment, my daughter asked me to help her with something on her DS and if we could go to the shop to spend her Christmas money, which is £15. And sis says, aw, is that my little niece? Tell her auntie says hi and I love you. And I say to daughter, auntie says hi and love you. And to sister, yeah. Had to help her with something on her DS and she wants to spend her Christmas money. Oh, so you have more than a tenner? You can send me more. What? It's not your money. It's daughter's, so no. Oh, come on. I know my little niece would like to help her auntie. I said no. Well, you can always get a refund for the DS and give me the money. It's not really an essential thing anyway. You know those moments in movies where they pull the phone from their ear and just stare at it? I had that moment. I said, why the hell would I do that? Because you're my big sister and it's your responsibility as family. So... I should get the money back that my partner and I saved for the daughter's Christmas present and give it to you? I don't think so. But you have to. No, I don't. Yes, you do. You need to give me money for food. No, I really don't. I offered to lend you a tenner and you had the cheek to tell me you should get my daughter's money. Seriously? You are so flippin' ungrateful. Yes, I said flipping instead of effing because my daughter was in the room. And she replies, Oh my god, whatever, I'll just starve. And cuts off the call. During this time, she had been taking drugs and I was willing to give her the benefit of the doubt that she was going to use the money for food. But to be honest, I doubt it. Posted by user Subject Delta 28 Titled, Entitled Woman Gets the Boot from the Doctor's Office. So I work at a podiatrist's office as an x-ray tech. Most of our patients are elderly and are near and dear to my heart. The kind of people who are like second grandparents to you, whose feet you happen to be very acquainted with. Then there's patients like this woman. We'll call her Lynn. Lynn is that kind of woman that will be sickly sweet to your face and then complain like you killed her puppy to your superiors. We would dread looking at the schedule to see her name on the daily patient appointment list. Some of my co-workers have flat out refused to take her back to a patient room and get vital signs, prep her room, etc. Everyone at my office has a that bit Lynn did this to me story. It's practically a rite of passage. At this point, she had been coming to our office for about three years. In my own personal experience with her, she acted kind to my face, but slightly entitled. She complained about something I did to my doctor, and to be honest, it was so mundane, neither I or the doctor she complained to, who owns our practice, took it seriously. The doctor even flat out said, Oh, Lynn complained about you, Delta, but she complains about everyone. When she didn't get the proper reaction she expected from the doctor, again, 
Doctor thought it was mundane and said she would speak to me about this problem. She then tried to call a day or so later and speak to our office manager. My co-worker picked up the phone and spoke to her. Lynn had complained to the doctor that owned the practice, so she couldn't exactly take it to anyone higher up in our office food chain. She had the nerve to say, I don't want anyone to get in trouble, but I think it needs to be addressed. Lady, you went out of your way twice to complain about me. You wanted me to get in trouble. On to the main event. Lynn finally gets her comeuppance. I was on maternity leave when this happened, so this is secondhand from my co-worker who isn't a Redditor. Lynn came into the office in apparently a very foul mood, more so than usual anyway. One of our nurses called Lynn back to a room three minutes after her scheduled appointment time. Lynn proceeded to contradict all of this nurse's questions and information she had about the appointment out of spite. Stuff like, Lynn, your blood pressure is 142, 90. And she says, that's not right. My blood pressure is usually 140 slash 80. Nurse 1, being an older woman and over years of Lynn's BS said, okay then. Then when the doctor came in, Lynn started demanding that, you have to give me an injection. My feet hurt and you're going to fix it now. The doctor's policy is that these injections, which can help with certain types of foot pain, are a once in every three months deal. And if something stronger is needed, they'll look at physical therapy so they won't just throw pain pills at you. Lynn had had her injection about one week ago and constantly refused physical therapy, despite having no valid or medical reason to not go. She was very obese and very lazy. She just wanted a solution now and didn't want to correct things in her life that would easily stop the problem for good instead of temporarily. Then Lynn demanded new diabetic shoes. Now normally, we do offer this service with one nurse, let's call her Nurse 2, that has some sort of certification that only she has to take the measurements for the shoes. However, Lynn had burned that bridge a long time ago because she had repeatedly treated Nurse 2 like garbage and called her a beer. Nurse 2 had long ago refused to measure her ever again. The doctor, knowing this, told Lynn that she would send orders for new diabetic shoes to another company we worked with in the area that does this sort of thing. But Lynn didn't want shoes from them. She wanted them from us. The doctor, not wanting to throw Nurse 2 under the bus, simply told her we weren't offering diabetic shoes at this time from our office. Lynn kept getting angrier, but had no choice but to accept defeat that she wasn't getting what she wanted, schedule her next appointment, and pay her copay. She went to our receptionist's window and concluded her business and headed out to the parking lot. She had paid with a credit card, and our receptionist asked her if she wanted her receipt, to which she replied, Ugh, no, why would I want that? She then proceeds to stomp on out to her car. Three minutes later, she calls our receptionist from the parking lot. She's angry and says, You need to print me off a receipt for our transaction today. Why wasn't I given one? And the receptionist says, Ma'am, I offered it to you before you left. I can send it to you in the email, or you can pick it up from our office at your convenience. You did not offer me my receipt. I'm in the parking lot. You need to bring it out to me now. Ma'am, you can come back inside and get it, or I can send it to you in the mail. I can't leave my desk as I'm the only receptionist in the office today. You have to bring it out to me now. My legs hurt and I can't walk in there. This was crap. She literally just walked out of the building just fine and had no leg injuries. At this point, Lynn just starts yelling about how she doesn't deserve to be treated like this and how someone needs to bring her the receipt now, yada yada yada. It's so loud that Nurse 2 can hear Lynn yelling on the phone from several feet away. Nurse 2 asks if it's Lynn on the phone, and the receptionist confirms it is. Nurse 2 asks for the phone and says that she'll handle this. She says, Hello, this is Nurse 2. How can I help you? Lynn's yelling and says, 
You need to bring me my receipt now. My legs hurt and you need to bring it now. I should have been offered it in the first place when I checked out. This is ridiculous. You were all incompetent. Bring it to me now. Ma'am, your legs seem to be working just fine when you walked out of the office. Now, you can either come in and get your paper yourself or we can mail it to you. Lynn starts yelling incoherently, repeatedly calling Nurse 2 a beer, etc. And Nurse 2 just replies, You have a nice day, ma'am, and hangs up. Nurse 2 told me how great it felt to just call Lynn out on her BS. I felt the satisfaction from the story when Nurse 2 told me about it a couple weeks later when I returned from paternity leave. But it gets better. Apparently, the doctor that was working that day, we have two, and they rotate the days they work and surgery days, had overheard Lynn's yelling on the phone and was not having the way Lynn treated the entire staff. She told our other doctor, the one that owns the practice, and they agreed that they would dismiss her from the practice. So the rest of my work days are looking a lot more Lynn-less every day I go in, and it's a wonderful life. TLDR, entitled parent kicked out of practice and told off by nurse she repeatedly mistreated for years. Edit, thanks for the awards. Many of you asked how Lynn took the dismissal. She's been sent a letter of dismissal by our two doctors and should have received it by now, but nothing else has happened. If anything else happens with Lynn, I'll post an update. Also, someone mentioned they think Lynn's real name, but that guess was incorrect. All I'll give out is it's a three-letter name. Posted by user Leathershop8468. Titled, Sister-in-law steals my niece's Christmas gift for charity. I have a seven-year-old niece who wants to be a police officer like her dad when she grows up and loves the color pink. The more sickly sweet pink, the better. She's a sweet kid that doesn't ask for much. I love to knit and crochet during the year. Then I give the scarves and hats that I make to my aunt's church who organizes Christmas parties for really low-income families. I'm talking about people with children who can barely afford a coat. This party is filled with games and activities for the children. It's amazing since the church is very active in the community and has managed to get sponsors from a big supermarket who offers whole turkeys and lots of food for the parents on top of top quality gifts for the children. I love helping my aunt during this time by giving my time and knitting stuff for those less fortunate. My brother recently started dating this girl and to be kind and honest, I don't like her. She has trouble understanding personal space, privacy of others, or boundaries. She will insist that you tell her all about private affairs that you don't want to talk about and will make it her business. She has been constantly trying to get me to date her friends that I'm not interested in. At one point, she thought I was a lesbian because I didn't like any of the guys she wanted to set me up with. When my aunt talked about the church's plan to still offer help during Christmas despite the pandemic, I told her that I had lots of scarves and hats to give at home. My aunt was delighted and asked me to bring them to her as soon as possible. I agreed. However, the day I wanted to bring them to her, I was called to come into the office to replace a colleague. My work is in reduced workload. I asked my sister-in-law if she could pick up the bag with the scarves and hat that was sitting on the top of my stairs, not in my living room. As I said, my niece loves the colour pink, and she asked me to make her a neon hot pink hat and a scarf with a white heart. I agreed, and had just finished them both and left them in a drawer in my living room. I was planning to wrap them up and give it to my sister later on. Fast forward to this evening, I come home exhausted. It's been a while, I've done the work, and there was a lot to do. I noticed my sister-in-law had come by and taken the bag. Oh great, I thought. It reminded me of my niece's gifts. However, when I came to get them, they were gone. I checked everywhere for them, thinking that I had misplaced them. Then it hit me. Maybe I had put them in the bag by mistake. 
I immediately called my aunt, but she couldn't find them. There was no neon hot pink scarf or hat with a white heart. I call my sister-in-law in a panic. She picks up and tells me that she had seen the scarf and hat. Oh, thank God, right? Nope. Turns out that dear tramp-in-law decided that I hadn't given enough for charity. So, she decided to snoop around my house to find some more. She took four other scarves and hats that were for other people, my niece's gift, and decided to rearrange my drawers because they were not clean and organized. I put my anger on the back burner for a while, because my niece's gift was more important for now. When I asked her what happened to it, she responded that she had taken it and given it to her niece because her sister was in need. To say that I was offended and pissed is like saying that fire burns. I proceed to lose my crap at her. How dare she? She goes through my stuff, takes my belongings, gives away my gift for my niece, and then has the gall to give me a lecture on how I should be happy that I help a spoiled brat who has two parents, making in the seven figures a year. I told her that if the scarf and hat weren't in my possession by tomorrow night, I was going to sue the crap out of her. She scoffed and hung up. I called everyone in my family, especially my brother. 20 minutes ago, my sister-in-law brought me the scarf and hat back and apologized. She was in tears and begging me not to involve my cop of a brother-in-law. My brother-in-law, bless his heart, had swung by her house and had threatened to have her arrested for thievery. I just took back my stuff thanked her for doing the right thing, and closed the door on her. I was so angry at her that I was numb inside. My niece will have her gift, my aunt has the knitted stuff that I made for her church, and my brother is now single. What a day. Alright, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video, guys. I do hope you enjoyed it. As always, I want to do a huge shout out to all my channel members and Patreon subscribers. You should be up on the screen now. I love you all, and I think every single one of you are amazing for supporting the channel in the way that you do. Again, thank you so much for supporting me. And again, if you did enjoy today's video, please do tell me what you thought of it down in the comments below. All of your hot takes, opinions, whatever you think, really, whatever's going on in your life right now, I'd love to hear down in the comments below. Before I leave, I'd also like to announce that I'm going to start doing meme content again on the second channel. I know it's been a while. So click on the marquee head on the screen without the Australian flag behind him if you want to go see some memes. And as always, guys, have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.